we are given a tree with n nodes, node 0 is the root, and we need to efficiently answer queries. Given node v and an integer k, find k kth ancestor of v. Ancestors, for any vertex v, ancestors is just everything on the path to the root, root being vertex 0, or node 0, vertex and node are the same thing. And the brute force is here very, very simple, we just keep going to the part. Say, for v equal to 9, you need to find the third ancestor. You just go once, second time, and third time to the parent. So 4 is the answer. For v equal to 9, k equal to 3, the answer is this guy, 4. We just went 3 times up. What's the complexity of this, of this brute force? Assuming that there are q queries. In each query, you're given vertex v and an integer k. The worst case is that tree is very deep, like the one here. It doesn't need to be balanced, or just it's a, it's a single chain root, then one child, one child, one child. A very deep uh, tree, then you can make at most n steps in each query. And the complexity is this, that's the brute force. We want to speed this up to, there will be some preprocessing, and then for each query we solve it in logarithmic time, binary logarithm of n which is, of course, much, much faster. How do we usually get logarithm in the complexity? Almost always we get it by dividing n multiple times by 2. And the most common example of it is binary search, obviously, where, let's say, you have a sequence of size 100, you ask in the middle, and then you're left with 50, then 25. Logarithmically many steps. Divide and conquer is also some example, then it's usually n log n, and not really logarithmic, but it's similar, also about dividing in the middle. But not always it works, and this is one example of it. Uh, here you can think, hmm, can I quickly go up by k over 2 steps? Because if I can quickly go by k over 2 and do it just twice, then I will in total go by k steps. I just try to, in some way, speed up the brute force. Uh, but it turns out that going twice up by k over 2 steps is quite independent, and it's not really that you can combine them to do it faster. Of course, if you are able to do this in constant time, then you can go up uh, by k in constant time, but nope. So this left method doesn't work. The other method related to binary logarithm is to use powers of 2. This is less common, but it appears in segment trees. We, don't, we will not talk about them today, but also binary lifting and sparse tables. Sparse tables is something we will discuss in a future video, but the topic of today's is binary lifting. Uh, still, what's going on with powers of 2? Well, there, are, there is logarithmic number of powers of 2. Is, say, n is 100, then available powers of 2 are 1, 2, 4, 8, and so on, up to 64. And the number of here available powers is logarithm of n. Uh, but what does it have to do with our problem? What about going up just by powers of 2? So there are two questions. Can I solve a problem quickly if k is always a powers of 2? And then the other part is using that, can I solve problem for general k efficiently? The, the other question is easier to answer. So assume that for arbitrary node, you can go quickly up by 8 steps. So you have some kind of black box that tells you, okay, for this uh, node v, and for, let's say, 64 or 32, you know what's that ancestor. So if k is power of 2, you can in constant time, may, maybe not constant time, but you can very, very quickly answer that. Can we solve the problem in that case? Uh, more efficiently than just in linear time per query? Yes, we can. Say that we get a question about this node and k is equal to 6. But there is some black box that tells us what's the fourth ancestor, for example. Then I can use this black box to quickly jump by four up. And then I can use this black box again, this time asking about going up by two. This way, in two jumps, I went up by six steps. And that's the thing with binary representation of a number. Any k can be represented as powers, the sum of powers of 2. Because, uh, say, k is equal 19, it is something in binary system, like what, uh, 16 plus 8 for this. 
I think it's this in binary system. So it is equal to 16 plus 2 plus 1. If you need to go up by 19 steps, but you can go up by one step, 2, 4, 8, 16, you can just make three such big jumps. Binary lifting is also called sometimes jump pointers because we make those jumps. And that's not really related. So just if we are able to deal with powers of two, then we are able to solve the problem in logarithmic complexity. Just for any k given, we will represent it as the sum of powers of two by representing k in binary system. And we'll make a few jumps. The remaining question is still, how can I quickly jump i by, for example, 16 steps? And this is where preprocessing comes. Uh, we will discuss the pseudocode on the right and later we'll actually code the solution for some lead code problem uh, in C++. We already know how to go up by one step up because that's parent of a vertex. How can we know what's the grandparent, so second ancestor of node 10? What is this guy? It is here 8, but how do I know it? It is parent of my parent. How do we know the fourth ancestor, k equal to 4. If I already know the second ancestors, for 10 that's 8, for 8 that's 4, then I can combine that and I can know the fourth ancestor. Then how, to, how do I know eighth ancestor? I go up by 4 and up by 4. Seems quite easy. What I need with this preprocessing is for every node, for each of n nodes, I need to know how to go up by 1, 2, 4, 8, and so on, all the powers of 2. The number of powers of 2 is logarithmic, log of n. Actually, log of, logarithm of depth of the tree, but let's say that it's just log of n. We create this array to store all the values there, to store the proper ancestors. That's the definition for node v and number j from 0 to logarithm, minus 1. Uh, that's the definition. That ancestor of v, 2 to jth power. For example, j equal to 5 means 32nd ancestor of v. The, for 0, it's just parent. And for every next thing, like grandparent is parent of parent. Maybe this will, line will be easier to understand if I put spaces here. This is my parent, parent of v. And then for him, I get his parent. So this is my grandparent in total. And this continues. If I know my second ancestors, I look at my second ancestor and I take his second ancestor. That will give me my fourth ancestor. And so on. This way I compute 8th, 16th, and so on. There is logarithmically many steps here. Obviously, this should be replaced with a for loop. Uh, for every j, again, this is just pseudocode. From 1 to log minus 1. We compute this value, and here I take my previous power, uh, j minus 1, and I get its power. This replaces, of course, all those lines. And we have n times logarithm complexity of preprocessing. Obviously, we have two for loops, so it's n times logarithm. I will write it down. Um, this is both time and space complexity because we create this kind of big array. Sometimes the space complexity is an issue and maybe when you want to do brute force instead. Space there is often a trade-off between time and space complexity. Here both time and space are n times log of n, or actually log of depth of the tree. If the tree is balanced, then it's better, but actually then even brute force becomes very fast. Last thing about this code is that it actually assumes that parent of every i is smaller than i. For example, on the left, there is node 6, its parent must be smaller than 6, here 5, and then the code works, because we compute all the ancestors in order of nodes from 0 to n minus 1. If order is messed up, let's say the root is actually 4, and then uh, here we have 2, here we have 3, you know, the order is not sorted from the top, then this is a wrong order to go through everything. And then almost always we just run DFS, if you really dislike DFS and you want to do it this way still, then it's enough to just replace the two for loops. You can say that this for loop goes first, like that, then do the other one. 
I hope I didn't mess up. So first I anyway assign the parents as the zero, two to zero of ancestor. And then for every next layer, I say, okay, I know all the first ancestors. Let's compute all the second ancestors. Uh, this is the main for loop. Then I compute all the third ancestors. In the previous order, if uh, in the previous order of for loops, if we have this thing, like node four has child two, then it has child three. The issue is that you try to compute ancestors of node two without first computing ancestors of four. So two will try to use some not yet computed ancestors, not yet computed values in this array. Basically, don't worry about it as long as this is the case, and this will be the case in the lead code problem. This is pre-processing, and we still need to answer queries. And answering queries was discussed here, where we represent k uh, in the binary representation, and then we know what jumps we need to do uh, to go up, for example, here for 19 by 16 steps, then 2 and 1. Here is the lead code problem. Link is in the description. Let's go full screen. The constraints are that the tree size is around, what, 50,000? So quadratic solution isn't possible. Also 50,000 queries, and there is this condition about parents, which is quite convenient. Um, one more thing we didn't discuss yet, but we will need to see here, is what happens if some ancestor doesn't exist. Like for node 4, let's say, you ask about 16th ancestor up. What I already coded is the preprocessing part. There is here the constructor, which gets the array of parents. I here compute logarithm of n. That's not really necessary. Knowing constraints, I could just here put that hard code that it is always 20. But you know, it's nicer not to use 20 if it's not possible. 20 is logarithm of million, so it's more than we need. Uh, there is that array up to dimensional 1, n by 20. And we have the two nested for loops in n log n complexity. Now we need to get k ancestor of a node. How to represent number k in binary format? I can iterate over possible bits up to logarithm and always check if k has some uh, or intersection, sorry, and intersection with this proper power of 2. This checks if the j bit is on in number k. If this is the case, then we go up from node by that many steps. For 19, it would first trigger going up by 1, then by 2, and by 60. That's at least the goal. This is how you represent number in binary representation. You could, of course, here just you know, uh, print 1, else print 2, and then you would just literally uh, write number in binary format just from the end. Uh, anyway, let's remove the printing part and return note. What about those edges up that don't exist? I find it best in this preprocessing event to avoid various ifs to assume this magical line. Parent of zero is zero. I find it convincing because then actually you can form the problem as where will you end up in if you make k steps up? And now it's well defined. Because even from zero, if you go up like five more times, you are in zero. If from five you go up 17 times, you are at zero. This avoids any kinds of ifs there. Just sometimes later, because of it incorrectly here, we will say that we end up in the root and instead we should return minus one because this is what we should return according to the statement if there isn't anything like high above. And for that, I will just introduce the depth. Depth is very easy to compute also if you deal with DFS, if the tree is more arbitrary ordered, not just root is zero. Uh, if this is the depth, then in constructor, I obviously need to create it. By default, it's filled with zeros. And always when we see uh, a new guy, so zero has depth of zero. And for anybody else, my depth is depth of the parent plus one. The root is on layer zero, then everything, all the children are depth one or layer one, depth two, and so on. And then I will start this uh, query just by asking if what's the depth of node. If it's too small and we try to make more steps, 
you return minus one. The code will uh, be linked in the description. I put such codes in my GitHub repository. Uh, uh, wrong answer. I didn't expect that, to be honest. I did some debugging and printed the logarithm. I think my logarithm is too small by one. So here for like 50,000, I compute logarithm equal to 15 and instead I should use 16. Just because uh, when I do an array of size 15, Sometimes I need to go up by 2 to 15th, which is around 32,000. Long story short, either I need to increase it here by one more unit or modify this if condition a little bit. So now it will be ceiling of binary logarithm. And uh, that should work, I hope. Sometimes I missed going up by this extra step by 32,000. So I would I would avoid the mistake if I used 20 instead. Cool, that's accepted. And as I said, if there wasn't this condition about parents, then you're better off doing DFS and inside DFS for every new um, discovered vertex, your child, or just you know, DFS is run for this vertex for the first time, just make this for loop to update all its ancestors at distance being power of two. The complexity, once again, is to answer a query that's log of n, or actually log of depth, and for pre-processing, that's n times log of n, uh, and same is space complexity of the solution. Oh, and if you don't like this for loop for some reason, then an alternative version is to go from big powers, so from logarithm minus 1 down to 0. If k is at least this power of 2, then uh, do the jump and subtract k by this value. I think this should work too. Let's submit. Here we basically move backwards. Like if you have nine, k equal to 19, the first power of 2 not exceeding that you will find is 16. And this uh, decreases k to 3. Then you will find 2. It decreases k and eventually 1. So it's the same thing, same powers of 2, just you know, going backwards. It's just an alternative method to represent k as the sum of powers of 2. So just represent k in, binary, uh, in the binary system. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. And subscribe not to miss future videos about in particular sparse tables and lowest common ancestor, which actually requires binary lifting. So the method used here, but this time we will do it with DFS. There are also other methods for lowest common ancestor. Maybe we'll talk about that too. All right. See ya.